would have gone out to notification. So what you'd be looking for online would be the notification of a request for people to submit. Um, if you would like me um, to get that information sent to you, I can. Um, so we would have stated where we've got to. Not all of the omnibus plan changes will have proceeded as far as we would have hoped because as we've gone through the year, we've obviously had to reprioritise, including because things like intensification have pushed through. So, so that's what that's trying to outline is we had a, a, quite a big uh, district plan work, um, program that we we're working through and this is really just updating where did we get to on that. So if it's helpful, I can send around a link to where we've gone out to notification um, for submissions and also for the further submission process. Yeah, thank you, Chris. Sorry. So thank you, Chris. It's not necessarily about the detail. It's just about where they actually are. And thank you for that explanation. So which of the three targets do these fit into? These planning, these um, performance measures, do they fit into? The, the, the one on page 127. Sorry. Right, so the first measure on page 129 of your pack um, says a forward program of district plan changes dependent on timely completion of founding policy strategies and technical work, etc. It's got the omnibus plan change in there, as well as um, another handful listed specifically underneath that. In the comment, um, that comments on the omnibus plan change. So the one above it was just setting out what was in the omnibus plan change, and then it fits into that measure. Um, the policies and bylaws is not related to the district plan or the omnibus plan changes. Um, that's some of the other work we've been doing with you on things like the class for gambling, um, et cetera, et cetera, that, that you've seen come through some of our committees. Uh, the last one on efficiently and effectively developing policies and plans, um, th that's actually targeted towards economic development. Um, and then there's that second bit to that of preserving our district's unique character and natural environment. Um, that does relate to the resident's opinion survey and we've previously had a discussion about what does that mean um, and that um, uh, applies to this specific measure as well. So. Um, it's not directly related to that omnibus plan list or, in fact, anything I could give you. So, dropping out. So, so you're saying that basically they, um, what was on page 127 is recorded within the omnibus plan change that is the first um, performance measure on 129? Yes. that they haven't been signed off. So is there another target that actually will come in later showing they've been signed off? Or, you know, was, was the target actually just about getting to um, completing the submissions or is it actually about getting it over the line signed off by council? By council? Sorry, I was just waiting for the light. Um, uh, effectively, uh, what was agreed in the long-term plan was around the work programme, not completion of specific things in the omnibus um, pool of changes. Um, there are specific comments, obviously here, for an urban development plan, the flood risk plan, the coastal plan, the urban development plan and mana whenua plan changes. Um, so they, those have specific comments because they're actually in there. Um, but the omnibus was just there's a package of wider, um, smaller um, changes that we're making that will progress. And so we're, we're, we're reporting against the progress rather than specifically completing any particular one of them. Um, and that, that may not be a perfect measure, but that was what was put into the long-term plan. Um, and of course, um, I think as others have um, commented on earlier, um, into the next LTP, we can look at what makes sense to report going forward. So I appreciate that. And so, yes, so that does, um, you know, raise a, uh, something that we can look at. And I appreciate your um, response on this, Chris. Thank you. Thank you very much. Anything? Who's next? Are we ready to go to 
financial statements, page 139. <laughs> Anyone who wants to say I'm, I'm not an accountant but can now speak, right? Anyway. <laughs> well, I'm at page 139. I don't know where you are. Has anyone got, got anything before page 139? And we're at page 139. Mark, you want to make some brief comment on these financial statements? I mean, as usual, as occurs with, with all accounting these days, the notes to the financial statements are much, much longer than the actual financial statements themselves. Mm -hmm. um, that's common. Uh, so all, everything is explained in great detail. I guess one of the important things is the disclosure statement here, um, which is which particularly talks about the extent to which various benchmarks which have been set by the local government reporting regulations and so on have or have not been met. That's something which is of some significance. Anyway, I leave it to you as to what you would like to comment on or raise questions about. The floor is open. Well, you could fill in the silence. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a point. <laughs> um, so before we go to questions, look, I, I just want to say this is probably that this is the technical uh, financial part of the annual report. It's obviously very important. It's subject to audit. Um, feedback that we've had in the past is it doesn't make sense. Um, it's not written uh, in layman terms. Look, the, these these are the financial statements. They're governed by accounting standards, financial reporting standards, and the uh, the notes. Uh, believe it or not, are just providing more explanation about what's in there. So, so look, I, I, I do take on board that they they are difficult to follow by non-accountants, <clears throat> but they we are required to to uh, produce it in this format. Um, the team go to great length to to try and make it as simple as we can. Um, we don't expect non-accountants to understand it. So that's why we do provide a financial overview. Um, it's, uh, <clears throat> there's, a lot of, there's a lot of information in there. We, we do try and keep it as, as low as we can. And, and look, I, I really like the new, I, I love the way we present these. Uh, the notes are actually embedded, or well, our accounting policies are embedded into the, into the tables. Uh, if you went back about three years or four years, we had pages and pages where the financials and then pages and pages of notes, so it was difficult to follow. So, um, but there's a lot in there, Mr. Chair, and um, it's great to have Sam here. Um, we'll we'll answer any questions you have. The prudence benchmarks is a blunt tool. Uh, you either meet it or you don't, um, and they were designed by the DIA so that people could compare councils with each other because we all we all put various things in different activities, and it's and it's sometimes it's very difficult to compare us. So the prudence benchmarks or the disclosure statement was designed to, to make that a bit easier. Just before I call David, uh, Mark, could I note that page 141 is missing the headings? Yes, no headings. We, we've, we've picked that up. Thank so you. So there should be a statement of financial position <coughs> and a cash flow statement. Yes. And also, dear colleagues, you might notice on page 155 a comment about Air Chathams. Uh, which, of course, was an issue which arose at our previous meeting when we had a question for a member of the public. Okay, David, over to you. Thank you. Uh, page 142, I'm just wondering whether the, we need some kind of a note there because it looks like the council is consistently getting it wrong, and I'm sure it's not, but it looks that way. Budgeted 53 million, actual 17. Budgeted 66, actual 16. So we seem to be budgeting big numbers and then... They're not happening. And if you go up into um, vested assets at the end of the first of source of operating funding, uh, 36, budget of 36 got two, budget of 52 got two. Those, those numbers are so far out that I think it's reasonable for, for a, a lay reader to say, well, why do you keep budgeting things when you're 50 odd million out? I mean, what, why don't you just throw a throw your hat in the air and write down any old thing? Because what are you doing? So I just like, I think maybe some explanation for that. The other, I've got other <coughs> the, the other comment I've got to on page 151. I'm going to wait till we get to that. Yeah, that's, that's I think Mark will like to comment on that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So look, look, um, uh, we, we had this feedback from from David on Monday, and, and look, I think it's really sensible to have some explanatory notes. Um, what 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 we what what I said on the day is is the funding impact statement at. It, it is a it is a prescribed 
um, statement, just like the balance sheet, just like the um, statement of financial performance. So, so we it is very difficult to follow. It balances. It doesn't make sense to many people, but we have to do it. And so I, I thought the suggestion to have an explanation uh, was good um, in terms of the in terms of the variation to the budget. The biggest one there is actually it's not that we're getting it wrong. Well, we are. We we technically are getting it wrong year on year because we're actually trying to budget for the vesting of Old State Highway 1, which um, at the moment it hasn't come when we've expected it to come. And, and that's the, the main uh, the main big variation in that. But that, look, no one understands that, that particular um, statement. It's just saying, it just sets out all your revenue sources. Um, you know, does your operating revenue cover your operating expenditure? It looks at your capex, how you're funding your capex, and then it shows a deficit, which it isn't. Um, the key message of that is basically saying that it's showing how we fund our how we fund our capex and the surplus we make on operating expenditure is used to fund capex. So we use some of our operating revenue to fund capex, and that's the rates funded depreciation. So the short message from me is a good suggestion. Um, the team are working on putting a small explana explanatory note uh, alongside it because you're right. Uh, it looks like we're not budgeting properly, and it's very it's very difficult to understand what's going there. And when people see deficits, they they get a they, 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 mm. it's a little bit of an uh, allergic reaction. So we'll we'll put something there. Thanks. I just like that both Sam and Mark know that I have expressed my inability to comprehend the statement. Uh, have done so for, for, a, for a long time. It, it simply needs rearranging. It, it's basically about generating surplus from operating surplus and how that actually ends up helping fund the capital expenditure. That's what it's all about. Uh, but it could be shown more nicely on a bar chart saying this is, how, this is our total capex and this is the sources of funding for the capex rather than this rather convoluted statement which uh, I as a CPA continue to have trouble following Right. David, can you switch? Oh, thank you. Um, yes. Look, there is one item here which is going to blow up, and we all know what that is. And I think we need um, perhaps some e further explanation around that. That's the Air Chathams. Um, I know that former Councillor Gwyn Compton. Gwyn Compton is going to splash this all over social media and there'll be there'll be a lot of attention focused on that. Um, so I guess I'm asking about the, um, let me get my page. On page 151, you've got an increase in impairment of receivables. Uh, you've got a note somewhere about the 500K has been impaired. What's the relationship between those two? Have, have we written off the whole amount, or have we just downgraded it? Uh, you know, written off part of it, or what's the what's the situation, and how does it relate back to that table on page uh, one five one of our report? Sure. So, nice, Mark. so thank you, Mr. Chair. Look, look, I'll, I'll certainly talk to it. It's probably easier just to get straight into the Chatham's line on page one hundred and fifty-five. Yeah. Uh, so, look. It, it, it could blow over, you know. It could blow up. Um, don't know. Uh, we had we had this in last year's annual report. We have had a member of the public, Mr. Peterson, has come in and asked about the Air Chathams loan. So the fact is, we have actually provided a, a grant to Air Chathams, uh, repayable over five years, which is what it says on page 155. So um, so the first thing we have to do. The first thing that we have impaired the loan, so we, um, Air Chathams, have a requirement to provide us with their financial statements. Uh, we've had a look at those financial statements and we've made the decision to fully impair that loan. But we've also gone to great lengths to say in the note that that doesn't discharge Air Chathams from their obligation to repay us. It is, it is an accounting treatment. So um, when we work with our auditors, our assets on our balance sheet, if we think that they need to, rep they need to be recorded at fair value, and we get asked uh, whether, you're not, whether or not you should impair. Um, looking at Air Chatham's financial statements, we have, we have done the impairment, and we've, done, we've impaired them fully. Um, it is a matter of judgment, uh, and that judgment has been, has been audited. The other thing that happens is um, you have to reflect if we do a discount, it talks about the 3.86%. So the obligation from H. Adams is to repay us in five years' time, $500,000. So we have to reflect the value of the loan 
as at reporting date. So it's discounted to present value, it's a time value of money. And you can see in the note that we've discounted it to 460K and we fully impaired that. Um, but the key message uh, from me to the committee uh, is that uh, we have spoken to Edge Adams. They understand what we've done. They understand how we've reflected the loan in the financial statements and they understand that we haven't discharged their obligation to repay us. In terms of your other question with the receivables, uh, all our items on the balance sheet need to be reflected at, at fair value. And it is an annual process where we look at our debtors, which is our receivables, mm. and we look at that and we go, well, what is the likelihood of us actually receiving all that money? Because effect effectively receivables is oh, who owes right. us money. Yeah. And so we actually do an impairment. A and even though um, rates are 100% recoverable, uh, we, impair, we impair outstanding rates owed to us because uh, it's a requirement under, under good accounting, well, it's a requirement under accounting standards, but we impair that as well so that we aren't overstating our assets on the balance sheet. So that impairment is purely rates, is it? It's not? It's a number of things. because so, so we've got people that owe us for um, resource consents, building consents, dog fees, uh, rates. Um, some councils don't, don't impair rates, we do. We, we look at the total amount that's owed to the council as of the reporting date and we do judgment. I'm just wondering whether it might be worth having some comment because I'm presuming that you've you've actually allowed a much bigger amount this year than in previous years because of the economic situation. Would that be correct, or not? Is there is it worth some comment around that? You mean about rates as well as well, just the impairment that's that's um, in that table table six. Uh, uh, look, I. I I would need to take that away and, and, and talk yeah. to the team, but generally speaking, the methodology that we uh, deploy is that we look at all our outstanding uh, amount on rates, mm. and um, first of all, we look at so those rate payers that have actually contacted, ca contacted the council and have a payment plan in place. So those particular rate payers, their accounts are flagged, which means they don't pay any late payment, mm. late payment penalties, so we're satisfied that we've got a payment plan in place so we don't impair that. We have a look at those rate payers that um, don't have a payment plan in place but have fallen behind, or we look at um, rate payers that uh, haven't been able to honour their payment plan and we do an impairment against that. Um, or I don't think we, I don't, I don't know, but I, I'm certainly not aware of the team actually looking at you know the current financial circumstance and increasing the provision based on on um, you know the current uh, the current cost of living, um, we have to provide audit with satisfactory um, justification for our impairment and, and justify our judgment. Um, if there's no payment plan in place and it's simply just a matter of non-payment, we've we've probably gone quite high on that impairment. I, I'm, I guess I'm just trying to get a feel for whether that is a higher than normal amount this year than what it has been. Um, it, by definition, it is higher because our rates are more. So that well, actually yeah. does go up every every year. So yeah. it is a bit higher. But I higher. mean, you know, percentage-wise or whatever. Yeah, I think we've... Um, <clears throat> oh, I'm trying to give you a direct answer. So normally in terms of our rates, we track it around 98% recoverability. We are slipping down to 95 because we're actually charging more rates and, and people are finding it quite hard. Yeah. Yep. I'm just wondering whether that's something that yep. is worth talking about, you know, that we recognise that that is happening. Yep. Um, yep. I think the um, look, the team really do. They they, they go over and beyond. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if we if we see that um, accounts are getting behind, we actually contact them and mm -hmm. actually, um, you know, the payment plans. It's normally twelve months, <clears throat> but um, we work with the individuals, and if they need yeah. longer than twelve months, so we actually are starting now to extend more than twelve yeah. months, because at the end of the day, it's in our interests to get our rates yeah. paid. I, I just think, you know, in terms of transparency, it might be good to point out that we are noticing that effect. You know, with the, with the, with the higher rates, people are struggling to pay, and we've had to, and the percentage of impairment is much higher. Yeah. There will be a comparative figure there somewhere. Yes, there is a comparative. Sam, you want, sorry, just before I call Jocelyn, I'd like to call Sam. Uh, on the rates matter on page 154, there's a table that breaks down rates receivable and allocates the provision 
It has the comparative for the previous balance date as well. Yes. It's the bottom right hand table as you look at the page. Yeah. Sam, I, before I call Josh, I, I would just add that it would be pretty non conservative not to appear some of the rates. I mean, always oh, there will yes. be some yeah, rates yeah, non collected, yeah. right? Always, with the best will in the world, there's some that's non collectible. So to have no impairment of rates would oh, be absolutely. a very yeah. unconservative accounting practice. Just quickly on Air Chathams. In other words, it no longer exists in our financial statements as an asset, as a receivable. It's not there as an asset. It's been taken out. But the obligation, as, as uh, Mark said, the obligation on Air Chathams remains. Right? So can I just, so, sorry, can I just clarify when it was taken, when, when it was fully impaired? So it was fully impaired last financial year. Right, OK. And so, so it our doesn't appear in a line on this year's account. That's right. So, 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 la so last financial year, twenty one, yeah. twenty two, was the first year in which we fully impaired it yeah. to zero. Okay. And we've and we've continued to do the Ma same. That, it might be worth making that point as well in that section of you know, we on page one fifty five, whatever, to say that it was full, it was taken account of last financial year, so there's no confusion because I I wasn't clear on that. Uh, and nor was I when I tried to answer the question from Mister What's his name. Uh, at the meeting, uh, that I was not aware Mr. it Peterson. had already been impaired. Mr. Peterson. Yeah. Peterson was, had already been impaired. So I think to add the date at which it was impaired, yes, which is the previous year, useful. would be yeah. useful information, Mark. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Thank Jocelyn. I thank you through the chair. So also on the Air Chathams um, section on page 155, I'm, I think it would also be useful to say um, when the loan was provided to Air Chathams because we don't know how far through that five-year um, repayment term it is. And so what year was it actually given, Mark? Can you remember? I think it was 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So my second question is, um, so, on the, so on 155, so 151, there is um, a heading impairments and unrealised losses. And then on page 154, there's also some more, um, it says individual impairment. I'm just wondering where in these accounts that um, Air Chathams is actually recorded. Is it's it? Not, it's also it's not. Financial yeah. year. Yeah. It's not. It's already out. It's already out. <coughs> So what, for example, is, so the the one in 154, what's, what are those, that impairment for? So, um, look, just, just to help the committee, so the, um, so the notes, the notes to the financial statements had numbers, and so on page 155, it's number nine, it's loan, so what that's talking to is a balance sheet item in the, on the balance, the statement of financial position, it's talking to the loans, which has got uh, which has got a number nine. Yes, so if you if you go all the way back to the financial statements, oh. there are num there are numbers uh, which help you navigate. Okay. So if you want to know more information, so we've got our receivables, and we've got our loans. So they're, they're two different notes which are explaining two different items on on the on the statement of financial position. Okay, thank so, you. I mean, thank so, you. So, so Air Chatter. Mm. Yes. And and four forty three was the net yes. present value amount of the previous year. All right. So it is shown there, but it is not identified yes. as their chapter. Yes, oh, exactly. Right. Yes. Right. So that's what I was wondering. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. And to be clear, it's not on the financial statements because it's been impaired, and you see that in the loan in the in the note. Thank you. Kilda, um, understand impairment. All good with that. Happy that we understand when the loan was taken out, so the, we know the start point of the five years. Are there arrangements to repay? Have they started repaying? Are they getting close to a two years? They've got to come up with some funds. I mean, I think that was what was raised last time is what's happening with that. So I was just wondering. Um, so, uh, look, we, we are in regular dialogue with the HLMs. Um, as a condition of this loan, they do have to provide us with annual financial statements. Um, I know that Air Chathams are actually have been in a few times and addressed the council. Um, there isn't <coughs> the the condition attached to the grant was a repayment in five years' time. So there isn't there isn't a condition to to repay early. If they choose to, council certainly won't say no. Um, but the um, 
the first repayment of that loan is, is due in the five years' time, so 2025. The first repayment. Well, not repayment. The full repayment. Well, re, well, the full repayment. Sorry. So, sorry. What I mean is, they they can make interim repayments. They can repay early if they wish to, but they don't have to repay a cent to the council until 2025. Okay. Good point. So there's about two elements of risk that I was. Is their ability to repay in two years' time, which is for you to worry about, and for us is the perception of our um, constituents in regard the the repayment. So um, clearly, we haven't asked for a repayment plan; it's not required, and um, some indication that those discussions continue would be kind of helpful. That will keep Mr. Peterson, did you say? Yes. Away. Um, yeah, and so the other, and they're just two risk things. One's the public view, and the other is we should be monitoring. Uh, the impairment takes care of it. I see that in the financials. It's not going to be a problem, but there is a rangatiratanga issue having entered into an agreement, and then there's a trust issue in this council making decisions to loan. Um, at, you know, so that was just the two points of risk. Um. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, look, we, we have to be careful. This is an annual report, and this is the financial <coughs> statements. And we have we have a loan on our balance sheet, which is an asset, and it relates to Edge Adams. It is not the place to have all the information related to the Edge Adams loan, but we do have a duty to disclose what it relates to. Yes, the risk is with council that they don't repay, um, and that's the concern that's been raised by Mr Peterson. The grant was given as part of the COVID-19 recovery to keep an airline in Kapiti. And so, but the annual report is not the place um, to, to put that into the note. It, in terms of the financial statements to the annual report, the duty is disclosed what it is. It, no more. But it is no longer shown as an asset, that's the point. Well, no, it's not. It's saying that it's impaired, so it's no longer an asset. That's right. And it is stating that the obligation of repayment is still there. And even when they repay, then our revenue goes up, so to speak, right? It's a recovery. But the other point uh, that Mr. Peterson was raised was that the loan was unsecured. Um, and he thought that was, he seemed to think that was unsafe or whatever. But that's the fact. It was uh, We haven't mentioned here that it was unsecured. We don't need to. But that that will be an issue which may come up from some people. All right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. risk for me um, as far as perception goes. So I think that's quite important, even though it's not something we're going to do here. This is still a financial statement. Sure. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, Glenn, you're next. Yes, and oh, uh, Mark, you might have just answered my question. In, in the case of the company going insolvent, have we, um, are we, would we be um, one of the payees in insolvency? And um, if, if the five years rolls over, is your, the obligation finishes at five years, or can we roll it over for longer? That obligation. The obligation remains. Um, Does it remain until it's paid? Does think, it stop at five years? So thank you, thank you, Mr. Sorry, Chair. Sorry. Uh, look, in terms of the in terms of the nature of that loan agreement, is um, it can certainly it can be rolled over, uh, depending on just depending on. You know, when we get to 2025, what is the economic strength of the airline, what's happening, et cetera, et cetera. So the first obligation is repayment in 2025, but Council can enter into new fresh agreements with their Chathams. It is an unsecured loan. Uh, Mr Peterson was absolutely correct. Um, going back to 2020, uh, the airline was looking to pack up, so it didn't ha did not have the ability to secure the loan. So it, it, was, it was given a as part of the recovery process. So... So it wasn't secured for that reason. Um, we're not a preferred creditor, uh, and if and if they did if they did wind up, um, I can't say where we would be in the pecking order because we're unsecured. <coughs> David, sorry. Yes. Thank you. Um, we've just spent a lot of time talking about a half a million dollars. Can I take you to page one hundred and fifty-one? <laughs> where we've got a thing called operating projects. I'd like to know something about what that is. It's in other, and that's gone up by 1.5 million. I'm not saying anything wrong with it, but that's, that's quite a jump in, in a nebulous thing called operating projects. Um, 
maybe a little bit of explanation of what, what that means compared to the half million that's gone to Air Chatham. <laughs> it's a lot better than the eight million that Wellington City gave to Singapore Airlines. Um, and the other thing on under other is a total of 16 million. And the, the, the itemised ones come to about 12 or 13 million. And then the bottom one is other 16 million. Now, the criteria for um, relevancy seems to be 52,000 for bank charges. That's the lowest in that list. So there must be an awful lot of things to make up that are smaller than 52,000 that make up 16 million. It would we'll go for pages and pages. If there are bigger things in the 16 million than there are in the itemised ones, why aren't they itemised? Is it just because last year they weren't? Because it's, it's more a comparison thing than anything else. But if these items are bigger than 52, they should be in that list. And they're not. But if maybe they're all less than 52, but crikey, divide 16 million by 52, by 50,000, and you get a heck of a lot of items. And it's well over half. So can we just have an explanation of those two points? Because that's, a, again, a non-accountant just looking at it and going, this looks odd. Yeah, thank, look, thank you. So page 151, note, note 6. Um, so look, what, what note 6 is trying to do is to provide more of a granular breakdown of our operating expenses. Um, that, that appears as, if you look at the... Um, Statement of income and expenditure. We talk about depreciation, finance, and operating expenditure. So, that, so the note is, is is trying to to break down what our operating expenditure is, and there and there's some disclosures that we need to make, um, particularly um, with regard to our audit fees. So the, the question the question the first question was operating projects of four million. Um, it's gone up. It's gone up to four from two two point five the previous year. What is it? So um, operating projects relates mainly to our our um, our sort of uh, mowing the lawns, um, doing 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 projects in terms of um, that are that are of a non-capital nature with our parks and open spaces, our swimming pools, our libraries, um, just effectively running, uh, you know, doing doing particularly uh, sort of projects. But mainly, it's in our parks and reserves. Um, those are our operating projects. Uh, we have a depot, so we mow all the lawns, and it also re it also relates to operating projects to the three waters. Um, so doing 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 some repairs. Um, very very good point, and this was raised on Monday. Down at other, you got 16.7 million. Uh, that that's a, that's a that's a huge amount to have an other. Um, a, 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 and look, it is audited. Our auditors do ask us to open the books uh, further. So look, what what's actually in there? It's mainly maintenance. It's 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 the costs related to running our facilities um, and maintenance. So maintenance is repairing what we've got. But it's not capital in nature. So um, look, we've we've taken the we've taken the feedback on board. I've, I've had a chat to Sam just briefly this morning. This is this is one of the notes that we will make an amendment to. Uh, we will pro we will provide more granularity. We will um, we will insert a line, which basically says that our facility operations and maintenance is twenty one million dollars, um, and we'll actually we end up on other being three million. Yeah. Okay. Oh, and we will restate the comparatives as yeah. well. I, I just want to, can I rebut in a friendly way to David? Um, 500k may not be significant, but for people living in Kapiti, um, it is a significant, especially if you're a politician. It is very significant. <laughs> right, okay, we can agree on all of that. All right. Who's next? Gosh, we're making progress. We can have lunch soon at the rate you've got. The, there is the financial statements, and then attached to that is the summary financial statements, which are required to be a mirror image, of course, of, of the, the, the main financial statements. Must be consistent with the main financial statements, but again, are separately audited and are a separate, uh, separate financial statement from SAM, right? Yeah. So uh, almost, almost right, Mr. Chair. So the, the summary and reports again are prescribed under Local Road Government Act, um, but they are very much a simplified. So they're exactly the same in terms of aggregate, but they are very much simplified. Um, and what goes in the annual report summary is exactly what's in the annual report. It's prescribed under Local Government Act, but the, the financial statements 
uh, just a little bit simpler and a little bit shorter. Right. Kia ora, could I just, um, just sure, two little you, things, yeah, uh, yeah. very little quick explanations, page 163, Water Services Reform Programme, there's their risk. It's just that it's, on my copy, it's shaded. Yes, that's the same with all of the printed ones, I think. Okay, yeah. and so it's not, it's not a, it's going to be there? Um, Don't know? It's, it's just, it, it's been highlighted because we're working through that uh, with Sam. Um, we are updating that note. We still, we still have a disclosure note about the affordable waters reform. But it just it needs to be updated because things have you know some legislation has been passed, so it's it's been highlighted because it needs to be updated. Okay, thank you for that. And then on page one seventy one, um, David, just the there's a blank, and it's Paika Kiriki Kampe Estate. Yeah, that's all. Yeah, thank you. It's a format. It's a it's it's definitely a mistake. It, well, it's a format issue. Um, it's an edit. Um, all the all the text has been um, shifted to the right, so it's. Um, the camp, the Paikakariki camp estate is a restricted reserve and that text that you can't see is just explaining what that is. Right. Well, if there's nothing further, I am going to move the recommendation. Wait a minute. Oh, all right. Jocelyn. Sorry, I can't see. Thank you. Jocelyn, I am jumping a few pages down the, down the track. Well, actually, I'm not sure if I'm going forward or back now. Um, 169. Um, it's about the landfill aftercare provisions, um, and so there's various amounts of money that has been spent on monitoring and maintenance. I, my question is, rather than having the detail in here about what is, you know, whether anything is being found to be problematic, whether that is reported anywhere else to council. It would, would be a contingent liability or something, something like that. You know, for example, is there leachate coming out of any of those? I'm not necessarily an answer now, but is that reported to council elsewhere? Because, you know, we need to know about that if there is. Um, there's a risk. Sorry, that's not a yeah, yeah, thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, absolute, absolutely, councillor. If um, So there, there is a requirement to have a, a landfill aftercare provision, mm -hmm. and that's what yes. this is doing. Um, and, and every year it looks at the future... It basically, you know, our, our, um, our officers have a look at um, the future costs for the capping and the aftercare provision, and then it's discounted and it's put into the financial statements. But if at any time um, there's any uh, major issue or the projected cash flow forecasts are materially different, that would be re it would be brought back to one of the committees or council. Absolutely. Mm. So I suppose what I'm actually meaning about whether the monitoring does actually bring up any environmental concerns rather than the financial side of it. Uh, I think we probably these three, yeah, so Mr. Chair, we take that off. We take yeah, that yeah, offline. So That'd be a matter to we could we could just ask Sean about yeah, that. Yeah, whether there yeah. is. Okay. And it's so in the financial statements, yes. Jocelyn, as yeah. a as an estimated liability. That's what it is. It's a yes. provision. Yeah. It's an estimated liability. I think, I think, Councillor, what you're asking, if, 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 if we looked at the provision from one year to the next, if something drastically had changed or something was drastically wrong, is this the only place it's reported in the annual report? The answer to that is no. If there's something drastically wrong or something's drastically changed, that would be highlighted to Council. Okay. Um, and I or, or a committee, yeah, yeah, one of the committees, yeah. Thank you. So I suppose I also wanted to raise, um, I suppose, the formatting issue in 171. But is there anything in there um, of interest to this committee for them to understand? Because obviously Wike and I is mentioned twice in there. Um, so this 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 part so this so this part of the uh, so page, I'm on page 171. So. Um, all the annual report does is it breaks down. So it relates to the reserves and special funds. Mm -hmm. It's just explaining what the reserves and special funds are. The one that's um, jumped off the page is an absolutely minor one. It was a, it was a bequest. It relates to the Paikakariki Camp Estate um, that there's a meeting that's held once a year. Um, so there's nothing, there's, nothing, there's nothing in particular of any risk to highlight to the committee about the Paikakariki Camp Estate. Uh, and in fact, uh, just looking at the format, even the table, <laughs> the, the note tweet on my copy, note 20 is all blurred and, and gone awry. So, um, no, look, 
the restricted special funds have been exactly the same for as long as I've been at the council, and uh, there's no there's no particular matter to raise with the committee of concern. Thank you. Any going going gone. All right. Uh, I move that the Risk and Assurance Committee notes and receive this report, including Appendix One and Appendix Two. That's the annual financial statements. Sorry, that's the annual report and the summary annual report, Appendix One and Two. Recommends the draft annual report 2223 and the summary annual report 2020 be provided for consideration and adoption by the council on the 26th of September. Oh golly! No, thank you. My yeah, goodness me! Yeah. That's a serious error. We could have got that all wrong. <laughs> 26th of October. Thank you, thank you, uh, Liz. And delegates to the chief executive and chair of the Risk and Assurance Committee to make minor editorial changes to the draft annual report 22-23 and its summary prior to being submitted to council for adoption. Would someone like to move that? Moved by Lawrence, seconded by Jocelyn. All those in favour say aye. Contrary, no. Carried. Hey, now we're getting to it. Now, next item. Uh, confirmation. confirmation of the minutes uh, of the um, page 239. Well, they have been circulated anyway beforehand. Uh, confirmation of the minutes held, meeting held on, what was the date? 3rd oh. of August. 3rd of August. Will somebody move that they be adopted as a true and correct record? Is that the correct record? Moved by the by Jan Council, by Mayor Janet, sorry. Seconded by Liz. Thanks, Rico. Uh, I'll put the motion, all those in favour, say, can't you know, carried. That is done. Uh, confirmation of minutes. Well, there's no point in mucking around, right? Anyway. <laughs> Anyway, uh, confirmation of public excluded minutes. That's the yellow, the orange page. There's no actual business, but I've got to move. I've got to move into committee. Where's the I read a resolution for that? I move that we hang on. That you go into public excluded. I move that we go into public excluded committee, the excluded session, whatever the wording is. All right. All right. All those. Sorry. Including Sam. Yes, that's all right. Yes. No, you, you can move it, if you like. Okay. Uh, seconded by... Oh, it's... it's OK, Lawrence, you're the deputy. The mayor and deputy mayor, that makes it really, you know, high-powered, right? I... I'll put the motion. All those I can't show Carry. We are now in committee. We now have the minutes in front of us. All right? Can you just wait until we're actually... We'll just wait until... Oh, sorry. Oh, my goodness, these people.